Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick Game Tidicom video, we're going to be discussing a plethora of news which has popped up in the tech industry over the past 24 or so hours. As usual, we're going to be going through this fairly alphabetically, however, we are going to stick NVIDIA fairly close to the beginning, simply because their piece of news is not exactly the biggest uh, thing that's going to rock the industry or anything like that. But, if you're interested in a low-end laptop or something like that, then it may be of interest. We are, however, going to be discussing ASRock first, because it's kind of confirmation on what the, well, AMD motherboard is going to be for Threadripper. So, of course, we know what Threadripper is going to be. It is going to, of course, be the super-duper high-end CPU from AMD. It is essentially going to be 16 cores, 32 threads. But the interesting thing is that ASRock did an oopsie, and they have confirmed that it is going to be known, uh, well, one version of the motherboard anyway, their own particular mod brand, as the ASRock Fatality X399 Professional Gaming. It is the only confirmed model so far, which is based upon this particular chipset, and it is, of course, confirmation that AMD will be utilising X399 as the chipset name. Because, basically, until now, it had just been a rumour. I had been reporting that, of course, that was the name, because, well, we had nothing else to replace it with, so until then, I might as well. But, you know, that's kind of funny, because it actually... I'm sorry, you can't make this stuff up if you tried in the tech industry sometimes. You just can't do it. It's like it, it's like a bloody watching a soap opera, but with billion-dollar companies. But basically, it means that Intel now are going to have a bit of a problem on its hands, because its own high-end desktop, of course, has been the X99, X299. Well, now it's boned, because it can't use X399, unless it decides to do something very strange with the... You know, with the terminology like, I don't know, X399i for Intel, or whatever. <clears throat> so, I don't necessarily like the fact AMD did that, to be honest. Because I do feel it might cause a bit of confusion in the marketplace. Not necessarily for the high-end users or people that know. But, you know, if maybe if you've returned to PC gaming and, you know, it, it's just a bit weird. I don't, I don't begrudge them doing it or anything like that. I just think it's a bit weird. And it's obvious that there was uh, some ideas behind it. Very quickly as well, uh, this one actually slipped under my radar, I will be totally honest with you, but AMD have actually confirmed, this is confirmation from James Pryor at AMD, that, well, Threadripper is not Ryzen 9. So it is just Ryzen Threadripper. There is like no Ryzen 9 or anything like that, which probably means the names we've heard previously, like X1999 and all that stuff, is possibly bogus. Um, obviously, we're just going to have to wait until Computex win or whatever other date until AMD decide to release all of that information publicly. But we shall continue with this with Intel. I'm uh, sorry, with NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA have once again not released the information firsthand, but this time we have the information from HP, specifically on a laptop. Now, it's very, very small amount of news, but basically the GeForce MX150 has been announced. Specifications? Don't know. All we know is it has 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. I'm sure that you and I can both probably guess this is running at at least 11 gigahertz for the GDDR5X memory, and it's probably running on a 512-bit bus. Yeah, you probably don't believe that at all, do you? Yeah, I don't think so. It's probably going to be like a 128-bit bus at best, to be honest. And obviously, it is an, only an MX150, so it probably isn't even going to be that with very low clock speeds. But obviously, the number of CUDA cores and all that stuff, we're just going to have to wait and see. Once again, this is probably going to be a Computex thing. Jesus Christ, I seem to be saying that quite frequently at the moment. Heesh. Anyway, uh, let's discuss some AMD stuff. Yeah, we kind of started out with some AMD bits and bobs at the beginning, but there is a lot of AMD stuff that's popped up. Uh, some server plans have also emerged onto the internet. And, well, one of them is Starship. Now, Starship is probably now known as Rome. Now, it is based on a Zen 2 architecture and is probably going to have up to 48 cores and 96 threads. And the TDP is being listed up to about 180 watts, which is absolutely crazy. That's kind of bonkers when you think about just the sheer level of performance that this could possibly bring. And AMD have also been fairly vocal, of course, when it comes to discussing things in the financial sense. <clears throat> no, I don't mean, of course, you know, the price of the new Vega cards, but rather uh, regaling 
uh, information to investors to basically tell you to buy their stock. Now, at the 45th annual JP Morgan Global Technology Media and Telecom Conference, by the way, it is available online. You can check it out on JP Morgan's official website. I'll try to remember to link it in the video description. The entire podcast is available. It's about 30, 35 minutes, if memory serves. Um, I'm not going to embed it into this video because you basically have to uh, accept some agreements and other bits and pieces beforehand. And I think one of those is not to reproduce the, the podcast. So I'm not going to do that for obvious reasons. But basically, the too long didn't read is that AMD have said that they will be shipping the Frontier cards with 16 gigabytes of memory and they are shipping them the latter half of June, so not too long at all. And we'll be seeing enthusiastic gaming platforms, the machine learning platform, the professional graphics platform very soon thereafter. And specifically, they will be launching Vega across all of the market segments over the next couple of months. So once again, this is confirmation that, let's say, late June, July, August at the very latest, we should, in theory, see RX Vega. Uh, for those who don't know, of course, RX Vega is the consumer derivative of the uh, New Frontier version of Vega. A New Frontier is for like professional usage scenarios. So, for example, you know, professional graphics or whatever. And for those who are probably going to ask in the comments, yes, by all means, you can use Frontier Edition for, um, let's say, playing Quake. But, from what AMD have said in other interviews, which we've discussed previously, there are a couple of caveats. One, uh, supposedly, it's going to require, well, the drivers, the software themselves, will not be optimized for gaming. So you can do it, after all, from what AMD have said, all of the demos so far have been essentially on the Frontier Edition. And the second thing, what AMD have said, there are a couple of features which are going to be specific to the RX Vegas. Once again, the gaming orientated platform. What those are, I could not tell you. If I had to take a guess, and it is only a guess, it might be like boosting, it might be perhaps more aggressive clock speeds on the core, uh, whatever. And I can probably make the assumption that they might also allow AIBs, in other words, the MSIs or whomever else to be much more creative when it comes to cooling solutions as well. So obviously, there is a good possibility that you might see the equivalence of the RX Vega ship with higher clock speeds, perhaps better boost clocks and whatever else. We, we're just going to have to wait and see. I wouldn't be surprised as well if we see uh, more options in terms of overclocking, so perhaps better voltage controls and whatever. But ultimately, as always, we're just going to have to wait and see. Okay, we're going to be finishing the video off with Intel. Now, I warn you, this is specifically for high-end usage scenarios, servers, that type of jazz. So if you have any interest in that technology at all, I personally don't use it. I don't run a data center or anything like that. But I do find it quite interesting from the point of view of, like, well, eventually some of this uh, technology or derivatives of it will feature, uh, sorry, filter down to, well, regular customers. So, you know, if that's... <clears throat> If this stuff is of interest to you, by all means, stick around. If not, well, you know, you can bugger off. I wouldn't feel, you know, I wouldn't feel uh, betrayed or anything like that. Anyway, so Intel have officially revealed yet more details upon its Xenon scalable platform family known as Cascade Lake. I have to say, and this is very, very much a side, I absolutely love Intel's naming conventions for some of their CPUs. I mean... I, I really do. I mean, Sky Lake, I think, is absolutely cool. Cannon Lake, uh, come on. It is. I don't know why. I, I couldn't explain it. I just think it sounds really cool. Maybe it's maybe it's just me being really geeky. But anyhow, so as we all know, AMD have been very aggressive with its server plans. We've seen Epic, which of course formerly is the artist or rather the CPU known as Nepal's, and we've gone into other details such as the 7NM Zen 2 cores, which are going to supposedly arrive in 2018, assuming there's no delays, and Milan is going to hit in 2019, which is going to be utilizing 7NM, but it's going to be on the Plus fabrication, and this is going to be on the Zen 3 cores. Which we can presume, as you can imagine, is going to have some IPC gains and possibly more aggressive clock speeds. Maybe some additional stuff in terms of the platform, but, you know, we're just going to have to wait. But what is confirmed is that Intel's Cascade Lake is going to be um, based upon a Skylake SP refresh. And is once again going to be using 14nm, but it's also the plus node. 
But here's the kicker. Here's the thing which is probably going to be separating it from AMD, and that is 6 terabyte Optane DIMM support. That is absolutely a bonkers. Um, and according to Intel, Intel Persistent Memory will allow users to improve system performance by dramatically putting in more data closer to the processor on non-volatile meter media, excuse me, not a meteor, God, the dinosaurs would be petrified, and do it in an affordable manner. This will be truly a game changer. Wow, that, that terminology is not used too much at all, is it? When it comes to the way applications and systems are designed. So for those who don't understand what that means, it basically means that let's say you were to shut down the machine, the data will still be resident in memory. Now, this is very different. You can basically think of it almost like an SSD, but operating much faster. So Optane isn't quite as fast as, let's say, high-end DDR5 or, let's say, DDR4 memory, but it has the capacity of, well, A, being absolutely ginormous in scope, I mean, 6 terabytes for the love of humanity, and the second thing is that this goes into a dim socket. So, essentially, you can just think of it as putting in 6 terabytes. Imagine you own your PC, whatever that is. Let's say you own, I don't know, a Skylake CPU, and you literally, rather than having RAM in there, you take out the DDR4 memory, you're putting sticks of this stuff in, and you've got six terabytes of resident. That's absolutely bonkers, and eventually we'll probably see this technology trickle down to us. So one of the things that Intel have done here is offering um, for SAP HANA, which we have discussed previously in the past, a couple of videos ago actually, SAP HANA is for organizations who deal with absolutely massive data sets. This allows you to do things such as predictive analytics, spatial data processing, text analytics, searching, streaming analytics, so on and so on and so on. Basically, we're dealing with absolutely ginormous sets of data here. And therefore, according to Intel, the upcoming Xenon processors, if you're running a four socket configuration, you're going to be able to run up to three terabytes of memory per system. Whereas on the other hand, if you're running an eight socket configuration, up to six terabytes of memory is usable. That is absolutely just crazy. And from what Intel are telling us, compared to a Broadwell E CPU, you're looking at about 1.6 times the um, performance. Now, bear in mind that when you're dealing with absolutely ginormous sets of data like this, 60% increase in performance is very important. It means that you can run, you know, absolutely huge queries and not feel that you're going to run out of memory and it's just it's very cool stuff to be honest with you and i i am really looking forward to this type of memory being usable by you know the average person obviously that's not going to happen yet and you know there is going to be definitely the speed question however for certain work tasks you know let's say you're dealing with like high-end data sets that type of thing like 3d graphics i can certainly imagine some 3d artists really kind of liking this obtained technology Anyway, I think that's just about it for this video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. No more stuff. Like, share, subscribe. I will be around soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.